You know, many people, even Christians, they do not seem to know what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit seems to be behind the scenes. I remember when I was a young boy and me and my family, we went and we were watching a drama that was on a big stage. And one of the things that really fascinated me was the curtain. I looked at the curtain and I saw it was made from a heavy fabric. It was beautiful. But beauty is not the main reason that the curtain was there. Do we look upon it just because it's beautiful? No. The main reason that the curtain was there was that in between the scenes of the acts, there were workers back there. They were working on the set and they were changing around, you know, moving furniture and they were moving walls. And they would take one down, they would put it up somewhere else, changing things around, the lighting, moving it if it needed to be. We who were in the audience, we never saw what the people were doing exactly. Why? The curtain. It hid them. But that's, so the main reason the curtain was there was so that we could not see exactly how they were doing the things behind the scenes. Oh, the workers back there, they were working hard, yes. Same as the Holy Spirit himself. He works hard behind the scenes. But we do not see what he does. We can learn many things that the Holy Spirit can do, yes. But for today, I'm going to pick only two for right now that the Holy Spirit does before a person becomes Christian. Let's pray. Father, Father, I pray that you will help us to understand the scripture about what the Holy Spirit does, particularly these two things for today. It shows your grace and your mercy that you have on us. We're in the darkness of sin, and the Holy Spirit works in our hearts. Without the Holy Spirit, how would we ever become saved? How? Lord, we pray that you will help us to understand from the Scripture, to trust and praise you more, to worship you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep in mind that the Holy Spirit, what he does is the same as uh, God the Father and Jesus the Son. These three share in the same nature, same. The Bible says in John 4, 24, that God himself is spirit. All three, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are persons, but their functions are different. They have some things that all three of them do that, that are the same. For example, the Holy Spirit grieves. And you'll notice that Jesus and God the Father grieve also. In some of the verses that I will be giving to you, it says that Jesus and God the Father, they do some of the same things that the Holy Spirit does. Now, my first point is that the Holy Spirit convicts. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. What does that verse mean? Well, at that time, Jesus was talking. He was talking to the disciples, explaining that he would be gone to heaven, but he would send the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. We read that the Holy Spirit will convict the world but of what three things? And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. First is sin. Sin, it is important that everyone understand that everyone in the world is sinful. We are all born with a sin nature, and that's from Adam. We are all sinners the same as Adam. We do not believe. Why? Because inside, we are all corrupted with the sinful nature from Adam. And that's why we do not believe in Jesus Christ. Our primary sin is what? It's unbelief. And that's what Jesus says in the next verse. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Secondly, righteousness. What's the point? Well, the point is that Jesus himself is God. He came to earth to become a man. He never sinned, all while growing up perfectly obeying God the Father, perfectly, the only one. That is he who wanted to go to the Father. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Jesus, he is the only one who is good. Are you and I good? No. 
Jesus, he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, who was the Pharisee, he told him who he thought that he was good. But no, Jesus is good. No one goes to heaven except the one who came from heaven. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. So, the point, righteousness, Jesus is the only one who is righteous. He is the standard. Can we measure up to his standard? No, we can't. God requires that we be like Christ, and we can't do that. And the reason is because we are corrupted with sin. Many of us believe don't believe that. We think we're good, we're moral, and really that's true. We do good things, but we do it for selfish reasons. For example, we as parents adore our children. We want to do good things for them, to have our children to grow up and have a good life. The question, do we love God? Do we obey God? He says that we must trust Jesus Christ. We need to believe in Jesus. Why do we back away from him? Because of our sinful corruption. We think, oh, I'm not bad. We do not believe God. It's clear that sin is unbelief. Let's read verse 9 again. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. So, if we do not believe in Jesus, we reject Jesus, then we also reject God, the Father. Why? Because sin is hostile to God. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. First, we discuss sin, second, righteousness, and now third, judgment. We will all face God, our Creator, on Judgment Day. That's a promise. Understand that God has already decided our punishment, and it is eternal death, eternal separation from God. Why? Because we love the darkness, our sin. We hate the light. And that is Jesus who came to earth and then ascended to heaven. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. As we are in the darkness of sin, our Father is who? It's not God. It's Satan. Our character is rooted in the sin nature, the same as Satan's character, the same. He lies. He is the father of lies. He hates the truth, the same as we do. We hate the truth, and we believe his lies. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Jesus, he told his disciples that Satan himself was the ruler of this world, and he's already been judged by God. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So... The Holy Spirit, he must convict the world, convict the world of their sins. We are all guilty. Secondly, righteousness. We need to measure up to the standard of Christ in righteousness, but we fail. Third, judgment. That's the next thing that our Holy Creator requires. You know, we are all born sinners. We are deep in the darkness of sin. If it were not for the work of the Holy Spirit convicting us, if it was not for that, we would never, never come out of the darkness into the light. Never. You know, even if a person was preaching to us every day, all night, all day, all week, all year, it would not accomplish in convincing us. We would completely ignore the gospel. Why? Because we love the darkness of our sin. And the Holy Spirit must do the work through the preaching of the word to convict us of our sin. He must. You know, I'm not saying that it needs to mean that you're a drug addict or that we're, you know, into sexual immorality or using filthy language. That's not the only things there are, but some have lots of pride that they are good people. They attend church. And some people say, well, yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as other people. Now, are we better than other people? 
Well, that's not the point. The point is that we do not measure up to the standard of Christ. That's the point. The Holy Spirit, He does the work. His purpose is to show us that we have failed to follow the standard of Christ. We still do not believe the truth. We believe the lies that we are good. The Holy Spirit, He must do the work to pierce our hearts, to let the light shine into the darkness of our sins. We have sinned against God. That's a terrible thing. The Holy Spirit, He is behind the scenes. We can't see what He's doing. We can't. But He is working to convict our hearts. First, the Holy Spirit convicts us. And secondly, the Holy Spirit, He regenerates us. And that means that He makes a person's heart new. He gives spiritual life. The Christian life, it starts when you are born again. That's before the Christian life. You're born again first. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 7, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Born again, translated from the Greek word, also means born from above. So the Holy Spirit must be involved in the person for the person to be born again. If the Holy Spirit is not involved, then the person cannot be born again. Jesus, he said in John 15, 5, he said that for apart from me, you can do nothing. In Matthew 19, 26, he says, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. What's more is that Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, 3, he said that if a person is not born again, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, a person must understand spiritual things, and he can't unless he is born of the Spirit. He's born of the Spirit first. In John 3, 8, it says that the Holy Spirit moves wherever he wants. Like the wind, you can hear the wind, you can feel the wind, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. It's the Holy Spirit, do. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. What does the Holy Spirit do exactly? What? And how? Well, we don't know. It's a mystery. We don't know. We can't see it. We do know that the Holy Spirit, we know that it must be involved in a person for them to be born again. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We cannot see a person being born of the Spirit. We can't see it. But we know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit pierces a person's heart and makes it new. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. Also, the Holy Spirit gives spiritual life. You before, you were spiritually dead. And the Bible says in Colossians 2.13, it says that before you were dead in your sins, you were in the flesh, meaning that your sinful nature was from Adam in sin. That's the flesh. It has not yet been circumcised, but God, through the Holy Spirit, He has raised you to be alive with Christ. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. That's the Holy Spirit's supernatural work, causing a person to be born again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The person being born again, he is a new creation, a new creation in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Nicodemus, the Pharisee whom Jesus was having a discussion with, he thought that the Jewish people who were born from Abraham, that they would become part of the kingdom of God. That's what he thought. He asked Jesus, well, how can a person be born again, go into his mother's womb and be born again a second time? And Jesus answered him. He said from John 3, 6, 
that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We all are born of the flesh. We are corrupted with sin from Adam. We must be born again from above with the Holy Spirit's work. That's the opposite of what that Nicodemus thought. He thought the flesh. Again, we don't understand how that a person can be spiritually dead in the flesh and how the Holy Spirit brings them to life. We don't understand. The Holy Spirit is active behind the scenes. We can't see Him, but it's clear. It's clear that the Holy Spirit is involved in the person before He's born again, and He makes Him spiritually alive. That's how He has faith in Jesus, and faith itself is the result of being spiritually alive. How is a person born spiritually? That's the beginning of the Christian life, but how? That's the Holy Spirit's supernatural work. And it has nothing to do with the person before they were born again, when they were in the flesh. And that's what Nicodemus thought. No, it started with the Holy Spirit causing this person to be born again. Nothing in the flesh can help a person become spiritually alive. Nothing. Jesus tells us that in John 6:63. 6, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So, nothing in a person's former life, in his flesh, in his will, in his decision, or in his plan, nothing can make him turn to God. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hmm. Why does the Holy Spirit touch some people's hearts and cause them to turn to the Lord, turn away from their sins, and be saved, while others' hearts are not touched, and they continue in sin and darkness? Why? Well, God has mercy on whom he will and not on others. Is he wrong? No. Let's see what Paul has to say about this. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. So what's the answer? God's mercy. Well, you know, we can't pull back the curtain and see what's happening behind the scenes. Hey, explain more. We can't. Sometimes God has things that are a mystery of the truth, and he hides things from the wise, and Jesus thanks him for that. In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. We should thank God. Thank God. Praise Him for His mercy that He gives us. He is the only one that gives us the mercy through His Holy Spirit that works in us, giving us the new birth. That's the beginning of our Christian life. That's the Holy Spirit's work of regeneration. First, the Holy Spirit convicts us. Secondly, the Holy Spirit regenerates a person. Now, I want to make it clear that it's not that one thing happens and then the next thing happens. No, they both happen about the same time. That's all we know from the scripture. Can we dig down more deeply into it? No, can't. We can't pull back the curtain. Again, that's the Holy Spirit's work, and it's mysterious. There are other things that are mysterious also. The Bible teaches this. It teaches that the work of salvation belongs all to God. All. Part of God's work is the Holy Spirit touching a person's heart, and then they're born again. And that's how they have faith in Jesus Christ, right? Well, you know, the Bible also teaches that at the same time we have human responsibility. You know, there are verses that say that God commands that we must repent and believe. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, 
that you believe in him whom he has sent. So how can we reconcile the work of salvation that is all of God's? And at the same time, he commands us to repent and believe. If we do not repent and believe, God will judge us. That's our human responsibility. That's another thing that we don't understand. The Bible teaches both. God's whole work of salvation belongs to Him and our human responsibility, both. Now, before we close, I want to ask you, first, why is the emphasis on the Holy Spirit alone working to convict us through the preaching of the Word? The Holy Spirit alone. Why? And also, why do we need the Holy Spirit alone to pierce our hearts to give us new spiritual life? Why? Well, we by the sin nature of Adam, we love the darkness of sin. There is nothing in our flesh that will help us to turn to the Lord. Nothing. That's reason number one. Now, the second reason, we must understand that the work of salvation belongs entirely to God alone. There's nothing in our former life in the flesh, nothing, that we can pat ourselves on the back for. No. God gives, deserves all the glory. We understand that, that kills off all religions that teach that we must do works so that we can be accepted into the kingdom of God. No. We should instead praise and sing to our God for His amazing grace that He alone saved us. You, who have not trusted in Jesus for salvation, you need to repent and turn from your sins and believe in Him. You know that you can't do anything to save yourself. You need to give your sins to Jesus. Jesus does not want your good works. Your good works to Jesus? They are filthy because they are of the flesh. Just give Him your sins and trust in Him today. Let's pray. Lord God, Wow. We should praise you. We should sing songs to you, praises, and kneel before you, thanking you for your mercy on us. We should not complain, saying, well, what about other people that their hearts have not been touched? We've not seen that, not been born again. What about them? No, really, that's none of our concern. Lord, we know that your word says and we follow it. We can't look behind the curtain and see more. We can't. The Bible teaches us that the whole work of salvation belongs to you. All the glory does. To your name. Ourselves, nothing. At the same time, we do have human responsibility to repent and believe. If not, you will judge us. Lord, I pray to you that people Christians will understand and be wowed that you did the whole work of salvation for us. You touched our hearts and we should praise you and sing praises to you. Lord, I pray that others who do not understand the gospel and are not yet saved, that you will bring salvation to them. I pray that they will understand and the people will talk to their friends about your salvation and the Holy Spirit will lead them to believe in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.